Today's challenge is to create an infinite star field animation. First, take the default cube and rename it to something more descriptive. Then go to the Modifiers tab, add a Geometry Node modifier, and press New. This is when Blender gives us two default nodes, the Group Input and the Group Output nodes. We don't need the Group Input, so delete it. Then press Shift A to bring up the Add menu, and with the Search field, drop in a Set Position node, a points node, and the random value node with its type set to vector. Now, if we increase the points count and set the maximum and minimum values of the random value range, we will have a collection of randomly distributed points, which will soon become our star field. To set the shape and material of the stars, again, use the Add menu and the Search field, this time to bring in a Set Material node, an Instance on Points node, an Icosphere node, and finally, a Random Value node. The Instance on Points node takes each of the random points and replaces it with an Icosphere. At the same time, the size of the Icospheres are randomized using the output of the Random Value node. Each Icosphere is then passed through the Set Material node, where it's given an Emissive material. To animate the star field within the Geometry node setup, we need a Scene Time node, a Position node, a Vector Math node with its operation set to Multiply Add, and they set position node. The scene time node gives us access to the current frame of the animation, and the position node gives us the location of each individual star. By connecting these two nodes to the multiply add node, we can make the stars move towards the camera. Note that the direction and speed of this movement is determined by the parameters of the multiply add node. However, right now, the stars keep moving towards the camera until they exit our view, so we don't have an infinite loop. To make this looping animation look like traveling through an endless star field, we will take each star and make it teleport back to the far end once it reaches the camera. And to do this, all we need are two nodes, a normal math node with its operation set to divide, and a vector math node with its operation set to wrap. Make sure that the denominator on the divide math node is equal to the total number of frames of the animation, in this case, 120. In addition, it's important that the max and min values on the wrap node are equal to those of the random value node. Now, let's speed up the movement of the stars using the multiply add node, and then play the animation to see the star field move in a seamless infinite loop. Keep in mind that you can always change the animation frames. However, you would also need to change the denominator of the divide node in order to maintain the seamlessness of the loop. In addition, you can also change the boundaries of the star field by adjusting the max and min values on the wrap node and the random value node. However, you might see a stutter at the end of the animation loop. If the speed of the stars is not enough to travel the entire space between the limits of the boundary. To remove this stutter, simply keep in mind that the traveling speed speed, set by the multiply add node, must be a multiple of the difference between the max and min values of the wrap node. So if we fix this, once again, we have a seamless star field animation loop. Now don't forget, you can get the project files for this tutorial using the link in the description. And if you're interested in learning more visual effects, here's another video for you. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.